This is version one of my beef rendang. It's a really easy recipe to make. It tastes fantastic. We've got a homemade paste, all cooked in a delicious creamy fragrant sauce, and the meat literally melts in your mouth. Let's get straight into it. Starting out, we're going to need four dried chilies. Fresh can also be used as well. You don't have to do what I'm doing right here, but I'm going to soak these in some hot water for about 10 to 15 minutes just to soften them up. Whilst they're doing their thing, we can also add our coconut into a pan over a medium heat, spread it out so it's not all sitting on top of one another, then we can toast this off for about two to three minutes just until it's nice and golden brown and fragrant. Once you do have something that looks like this, this can then be removed from the pan just so it doesn't continue cooking. We're then going to need five golden shallots. These aren't red onions. We're just going to roughly chop these. It's all going in a blender so it doesn't have to be perfect. We're also going to need two lemongrass roots, which is the white part. Just give these a rough chop as well because these won't break down in the blender. So you just want to get them as fine as possible. This part can also be skipped depending on how you want to do this recipe because we are going to need one whole stalk of lemongrass as well, which might sound crazy, but bang this on the bench. This is going to bruise it and allow this to infuse into our sauce. Once you have bruised it and it's a little bit broken up, I recommend cutting it into about twos or threes. This will just make it a lot easier to fit in the pan rather than just having a massive stalk of lemongrass sticking out. This right here is six kaffir lime leaves. I recommend stacking them on top of each other and then just slice these as thin as possible. You don't have to slice them, you can leave them whole, but you will have to remove them from the pan once the curry's finished cooking. Going back to the chilies that have now softened, we can then slice these in half lengthways, making sure you do it evenly, and then we can flip these over, just use the back of a knife and scrape out those seeds. If you want this to be even hotter, you can obviously leave them in, but these chilies right here are extremely powerful. That's why I'm only using four and I am removing the seeds. But it's up to you how you want to do this recipe and how much heat you like. Once you have these seeded them, just give them a rough chop. It just makes the blender's life a little bit easier. And also, if you're not wearing gloves, just make sure you don't touch your eyes or your... Anyway, once that's done, add the shallots into a blender bowl along with six cloves of garlic, the chopped up chilies, 15 grams of both ginger and galangal, and all of that chopped lemongrass. Then chuck this onto a high speed and just blend this up, scraping it down a couple of times just until you get a nice rough coarse paste. In a large high rimmed pan or pot over a medium high heat, add in two and a half tablespoons, which is about 50 milliliters of vegetable oil, or you can use any neutral flavored oil here. Add in all of that paste that we just made, making sure you scrape out that blender bowl. We don't want to waste any of this good stuff. Then follow it up with four star anise, five green cardamom pods, four cloves and one cinnamon stick for a beautiful earthy warmth of flavors. Salt to taste, and then just give this a really good mix around and just cook this for about three minutes just to get that flavor out of there and for those fragrances to start coming out. Once that's done, add in one kilo or 2.2 pounds of beef chuck steak, and you can even use beef short rib here if you wanted to. Add in that lemongrass that has been chopped up, and then just give this a really good mix through. Cook this for about five minutes, mixing it occasionally, just to get some color on that beef. Obviously, we're not gonna cook this all the way through, and chuck steak and beef short rib take a very long time to get tender. So we're just getting a nice little color onto this right now, as well as that fragrance. Next to go in is one full can or 400 milliliters of coconut milk, not coconut cream. This is going to add that beautiful fragrance. I'm also adding in a splash of chicken stock or water. It's completely optional. It's just something I do to add a little bit more moisture, as well as 25 grams of tamarind puree. You can use paste as well, but you will have to de-seed it. Then just give this a really good mix through. And whilst bringing it to a simmer in the meantime, just cook it for 10 minutes just to get those flavors to become friends. After 10 minutes, we can add in the toasted and shredded coconut, following that up with the kaffir lime leaves, whether or not you slice them or you can leave them whole. We're also going to add in 15 grams of grated palm sugar. If you don't have palm sugar, granulated sugar is completely fine. Then just give this a really good mix through. Cook this for about two to three minutes just to get those flavors to become even more friends. And then once this is at a simmer, we can place a lid on this, reduce the heat to low, and we're going to cook this for an hour and a half. You can stir it midway as well. This has now been an hour and a half, just carefully remove the lid, being careful of any escaping steam. Give this a gentle mix through, being careful not to break up the beef, it will be very tender at this stage. And you'll notice there's not much sauce, that's because this is what rendang is. If you do like it a little bit more saucy, you can add some water here just to change the consistency, or stock as well for a bit of flavor. For the rice, I'm going to add in one cup or 200 grams of washed jasmine rice, along with one and one quarter cups or 310 milliliters of cold water. Three kaffir lime leaves for infusion, which is completely optional, as well as salt. Give it a mix around just to prevent any clumps. Bring it to a boil. Place on a lid and reduce the heat to low, cooking it for 12 minutes. Then after 12 minutes, just turn off the heat, but leave the lid on for a final six minutes. Then remove the lid. Just remove those kaffir lime leaves as well. They've done their job. We can then discard them and then fluff this up with a spatula or a fork just to get that beautiful, soft, fluffy rice. 
To serve this up, add the rice down first in a bowl or a plate, then over the top add that delicious beef rendang, whether or not you made it saucy or if you have it the way it's supposed to be. I'm using lemongrass as a complete presentation, obviously don't eat that stuff, as well as chili as well. If you don't want extra chili, you don't have to use that. But what we're then left with is this beautiful beef rendang that's tender, it's delicious, it's fragrant and looks amazing. With everything done though, there is only one thing left to do, and that is we can then dig in. In all honesty, I nearly did stop recording this midway through just because I wasn't completely happy with it, but it really turned out well in the end and I am now happy with it. The flavor is delicious, it's fresh, it's fragrant, the meat falls apart in your mouth. And if you have any other ways that you like to do it, let me know in the comments. I love seeing all the types of stuff that you guys suggest. Definitely do make this recipe though, it is absolutely delicious. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, consider subscribing along with hitting the bell notification next to it so you never miss when I upload. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.